This land was given to Portugal by King Rama II in 1820, so exactly 200 years ago. The first embassy of uh, an European country in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. That's why we are the oldest embassy of, uh, of uh, an European country in, in Thailand. So we can say that Portugal is the oldest country from Europe, European country, with diplomatic relations with Thailand. In mm -hmm. those years, Siam, and now Thailand. And we are very proud of that. And uh, this is something that we try always to uh, share and to preserve and to uh, show to everybody uh, how deep our friendship is and our relationship. I arrived in uh, Thailand almost five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the end of 2015. It was, uh, this is my first post as an ambassador abroad, so uh, it is very exciting for uh, uh, a diplomat to reach the top of the career mm -hmm. and to do it in a country like Thailand, it's amazing. So, uh, especially because of the long relationship, bilateral relationship that we have, Portugal and Thailand are. Uh, we are very long friends, mm -hmm. always friends, uh, always supporting each other uh, since uh, 1511, when mm -hmm. my first, uh, first Portuguese and first uh, navigators from Portugal arrived in uh, Ayutthaya. Uh, so it is 509 years ago already. Oh, so that's a long time. A long time. So and we established uh, diplomatic relations immediately in that moment. We became an independent country in the 12th century mm -hmm. and we were a small country with the four million inhabitants in those years. And we had only one, one, uh, one uh, neighbor, uh, a land neighbor, that was Spain. And then we had the sea on the other side. And in those years, as you know, the relations between neighbors in Europe were characterized with a lot of fights and battles. And we were a poor country that needed to find ways of surviving and uh, getting new uh, uh, richness. And that the sea was what attracted us. And it took us to discover, to discover new worlds took us to India, it took us to Africa, to India, and then to Brazil and South America, and then to Asia. In the spirit of the Portuguese, we are adventurer people, and we like to travel and not to stay always in the same place. So, mm -hmm. so that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. They decided to come and visit Ayutthaya because it was, uh, Siam was already a well-known and rich kingdom with whom it would be important to trade. And that was what brought us in 1511 to, to Ayutthaya, and since then uh, we are in Thailand. In Ayutthaya there was the neighborhood, or the, what is now called the Van Portuket in Ayutthaya. There was, it was so big that we, have, we had several, around 3,000 Portuguese living there. Portuguese and Portuguese descent, because one of the things with the Portuguese uh, navigators and travelers, we had instructions from our king, because we were not so many, our, our army was not so powerful, if, even if we brought the cannons and the arms to we introduce them here, in, in a better quality than the ones that already existed here. And that gave a lot of power to the king of Siam. It made him the strongest king in the area and allow the king of Siam to conquer another, other neighbors, other neighbors around Siam in those years. So at some point the Portuguese soldiers became also the private soldiers of the king of Siam, even to protect himself and the family, or even to instruct how to use the cannons. And this made the Portuguese community very close to the king. The fact that we arrived in a small number to to one of the ways to protect ourselves was uh, the mixigenation. The, the king said that we should mix with the locals and create a real 
blood uh, connections with the local. And that was what nowadays you have a lot of Portuguese descent, Thai Port with Portuguese descent. And they are coming from this line of the Portuguese that arrived 500 years ago. 1767, the, with the destruction of Ayutthaya, the royal family that moved uh, to Tonburi mm -hmm. and uh, created the, the new capital of uh, Siam in Tonburi, uh, where now is uh, also a neighbor, Portuguese neighbor, neighborhood in Thailand, in Bangkok. Uh, this is Santa Cruz. Uh, Kudichin, uh, and this piece of land where this uh, neighborhood exists was given to the Portuguese that came with the king from Ayutthaya. Then King Rama I decided to move the capital to this side of the river, so the capital moved to Bangkok, and the King uh, Rama I gave also this piece of land or this area of the city for the Portuguese community to, to, to live. And then you created also Kalawar Church. King Rama II offered a piece of land to Portugal to, for us to build a consul general, or more than that, a trading post, where you should also build, we should also build a house for the consul, for the consul to live. A lot of things I discover here since I'm here like the influence of the Portuguese in the Thai language, the Portuguese words that uh, are used in, in Thai that are still uh, Portuguese words. I, I mentioned Kalawar, the church. Uh, but there's also other words, very simple words that you use every day and that are, are Portuguese words, like Salah. Yes. Salah, you, you have the Salah outside where you sit outside and you talk and you meet people and you eat and you... Uh, that is the word, uh, a Portuguese word that means exactly the same. The house is built around uh, this large staircase with a veranda in the front, a veranda in the back, a series of large rooms in the front, and then a series of small rooms in the back. This is a room where we uh, receive guests, and we would call it the kind of formal reception room. Um, some of the art that you see is ours, but there are a few pieces that belong to the Portuguese state, and this is a very important one. This is uh, a painting done by an artist named Lusitan, and of course, it's of uh, Santo Antonio, who is the, one of the most important saints of Portugal. And it's from uh, the uh, 17th century. This is a, a piece, uh, this is a Thai piece. This is a part of the series. We'll see the large one in the dining room uh, by Sam Boom, um, the ta famous Thai painter. So, and the elephant and the horse represent Thailand and Portugal. Or something. This is the large dining room. As you can see, the table can seat up to 22 people. Um, and uh, we, of course, this is where we have formal dinners uh, with the community or with other diplomats or with special guests that come. So this is uh, the landing of the staircase here is where we have the photos. Since Francisco uh, represents Portugal to six countries in the region. So here are the series of photos of him presenting to uh, the leadership in each of those six countries. And also His Majesty King His Rama Majesty X. X. King Rama X is there in the center. Here we have a, a piece that uh, represents the arrival of the Portuguese in Ayutthaya in 1511. So it's an oil painting on wood that uh, was done in Thailand uh, in, the, in t about 2010 because it was done to commemorate the 500th anniversary yes. of that the land in, in, in Ayutthaya yes. in 1511. This room we call the piano room because it has a big piano, uh, but um, this is a room that we use for, for many different things. So the furniture can be moved around and we've had, we also have had concerts and we even had the premiere of a Thai play in this room uh, uh, to a year ago, which was very exciting. So this is a more formal reception room. Um, it's not a room that we use every day, but it's very important for us to be able to have a, a large room to welcome 
the community and the, uh, both the Portuguese community and the Thai community when they come to the house. So this is a piece that uh, is done in, in silk um, and represents the Portuguese uh, relationship with the royal family and the royal retinue in Ayutthaya. Because of course the Portuguese were the first Europeans to come in 1511. They also brought uh, modern uh, cannon and technology around arms. But uh, as the Thai historians say, the Portuguese never turned those arms on the king, they put them in the service of the king. So you had many Portuguese and then Luso Thai over the generations who worked in security and support for the king in Ayutthaya. So this shows, you can see the, the top level there uh, representing those of Portuguese descent and then the lower retinue on the white elephants representing the, the king, the kings of Ayutthaya. This is a photo uh, of His Majesty Rama IX and Queen Siddiket, the Queen Mother, uh, while on their 1960 world tour. Mm -hmm. So this uh, was very important for Portugal that year because they chose to include Portugal on that tour in 1960. So here they are at the Museu de Coche, which is one of the famous museums in Portugal. Mm -hmm. So we always love to have to show people this photo because of course she always looked so beautiful and he also uh, looks wonderful in this photo. So this is uh, a very special memory that we have in the house. Oh, that's a very unique piece. I've never seen this yes. anywhere else. Uh, and the other interesting thing here, this, this space where you see the young king's uh, painting there, behind that space uh, was many years ago, and when the house was new, it was a jail cell. A prison. A prison, A yes. prison cell, <laughs> because uh, up until 1925, there was a treaty between Thailand and Portugal where Portuguese couldn't be tried under Thai law. So if someone broke the law, they were put here and kept here until the ship would be ready to take them out back to Portugal. Well, it's a regular room Not now. Anymore. And then the other very interesting piece is this door which uh, historians tell us uh, probably is from around 1750, uh, but it is a door from the Ban Portuguet in Ayutthaya. But uh, you can see the European and the Siamese on each side. Um, and you can also notice if you get up close, it would have been very um, color brightly painted. So you can see gold and you can see a green color here. And you can see that they are different because the Thai as a sword, and the Portuguese as a, a rifle. Because the Portuguese brought the rifles. In those years, there wasn't, they were, didn't exist when the Portuguese arrived. They didn't exist in Thailand, in Siam. And you can see also dogs, domesticated dogs. Oh. And, uh, yeah, because in those years, dogs were not a domestic animal. So uh, as we were saying outside, the veranda is actually um, uh, was extended in the early years of the 20th century into the shape that it is now. But uh, for many years in the end of the 20th century, it was closed in. Uh, there, were, there was glass in all the windows and there was air conditioning out here. So uh, it, during a renovation that happened uh, about six or seven years ago, that was changed and it was returned back to its original. <music> that it's striking here is the influence of Portugal that is still visible in the Thai culture. The words that I mentioned, uh, but also the, the food. When you think about Thai food, you think about um, spices and uh, very spicy food. Uh, you know that before the Portuguese arrived, there was no, uh, how do you call it? Chili. Chilies. Chilies were brought by the Portuguese, uh, but other very common uh, elements of the Thai food, peanuts, pineapple, uh, Potato. potatoes, corn, uh, all that didn't exist in Thailand. So this is something that is uh, part of the Portuguese heritage in the, in the food, in the, in, the, in the Thai food. And, uh, and these were all desserts made from egg yolk. Egg yolk. So it was this idea of using the egg yolk to create a sweet or a dessert, 
this was uh, a change for the Thai. Yeah, because Thai didn't use eggs to do desserts before. That was something that we brought from Portugal. Here you have the foitong. In Portuguese you call it fios de ovos, like a egg string. So it's the same idea. It's a string of eggs. Then the others are different because this is a tongip. In Portugal you call it trouxas and this is tongiot. This is difficult because it's like eggy, cream, in Portuguese is, is different, it's completely different the name. But this is the, 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 they are similar at the end. We have more varieties, especially on those, because you have ones with the, with the pastry outside and inside is egg. Uh, it's more liquid, some of them, you eat it with a spoon. Uh, the foitong in Portugal, they can be also a little bit less dry because they have also always a uh, syrup and then you have these ones here these ones are made with bean inside the difference in portugal is that and the ones that we brought here were made with almond and then you have the other dessert the canomphora so the the, the the cake of the foreigners this is like a sponge cake and it's, the, it's made with the, with the duck egg. Still nowadays it's made with duck egg. And it's, the, it's done in Tomburi, in Kudichin, by the Portuguese, uh, the Luso Thai community there. And in Portugal we have a very similar cake, bigger, like a sponge cake, made the same way. The only thing that we don't use is the, the fruit on the top. This is already the Chinese influence from that neighborhood, but the rest is Portuguese. So the thing to uh, imagine about this space is if you can think back to uh, 1860, 1870, okay. is that uh, this was like, um, it was like a little Farang village. Yes. It's where the Portuguese were, but the other Farang that came also came here for first. And there would have been many buildings. There's even an outline of a building still there in brick. So there would have been warehouses. There would, of course, been a pier for the ships to come in. But there also would have been houses that people lived. So you can imagine it as this small community for the Farang. Because King Rama II and then Rama III, they, they believed that the, the, the Chinese Folks lived in one place, Farang lived in another, etc. And this was the beginning of the Farang neighborhood of Bangkok. So, and then this was this was the flagpole I was talking about. So the flagpole went up in 1876, and it has flown the Portuguese flag. There have been two Portuguese flags since that time, but it has flown the Portuguese flag always since 1876. And you can see how tall it is. And this would have been when the ships coming up from from the, the, uh, the sea, okay. from the ocean, the Mouth River, they needed to know where the, the because location was. This was a trading post, because the Chancery, the embassy now, was one of the warehouses that, because that building is even older than this one. And that's where all the products that were disembarked from the chief were putting there. And then, of course, you also see the cannon. Yes. Uh, again, this represents this piece of our history in Thailand yes. because we were the first to bring this technology, these technology, these modern weaponry to the... Uh, these, to the original, these are Portuguese original cannons, the ones that we brought uh, in, the 15, in the 15 and 16th century. So these are the, some of the original ones. <laughs> Nowadays, having this history in the back, what I try to do is to show and to try to show to, to Thai uh, friends a little bit more about Portugal. Mm -hmm. Because Thailand knows a lot about history, and a lot of the about the, the, tradition of the traditions and the culture in Portugal, but the whole Portugal. We have a new Portugal. This is what I want also to show and to share with the, the friends in Thailand. Uh, not only in the culture and the art, and, uh, but also the, the Portugal as a developed country uh, economically and in the area of trade and industry.
This is also something that I'm trying to develop our economic and trade uh, relationship with Thailand. Now even bring Thai investment to Portugal. So that's something that is important to, to share with, uh, with everybody. Thank you.